Hello, my name is Dr. Tom Naska. I'm an internist nephrologist, and I have the privilege of leading the Accreditation Council for Graduate Medical Education. I'm honored to have the opportunity to speak with you on the occasion of your completion of this phase of your journey towards mastery in your chosen discipline. This is a major step towards your ultimate goal, the healing of the sick, enhancement of the health of your patients, and the opportunity to support the health and well-being of the community that you serve. I apologize for speaking with you remotely as I would much rather be able to see the joy and pride in your eyes, as well as that of your spouses, significant persons, parents, children, brothers and sisters and grandparents. I'm sure that I would also see the pride of your program director and faculty who have nurtured you on this journey to this day. Our collective pride is not only for your wondrous accomplishments over the past many years since you first contemplated becoming a physician, but also for the work that you, your faculty, your colleagues, and the nurses and other health professionals have done in stemming the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on those you serve. My remarks will be brief, but I hope they convey the importance of this moment for all of us. I have three thoughts that I would like to share with you today, gratitude, concern, and optimism. And of course, at the end, a request. First, gratitude. You, your colleagues, the faculty and staff of your institution and hundreds like it across the country demonstrated the true meaning of altruism to the entire nation over the past three months. You demonstrated the quiet, persistent bravery of doing the right thing for the right reason, even when not in your own best interest. You took reasonable risks to your own health and well being in order to save lives. But you went further. You demonstrated respect, compassion, empathy, and love for strangers. Strangers in their time of need. You cared about them as well as for them. About people who were breathing their last breath, acting often as surrogate family members for those leaving life behind. This is truly heroism, and it has rippled through our society. Your demonstration, not just of technical expertise, but caring humanity, this outward manifestation of altruism on your part has resulted in the reinvigoration of the trust of the public for physicians, nurses, and other caregivers. This selfless demonstration of humanity in a most dire time has renewed the social contract between the profession and the society we serve. While New York and New Jersey were the epicenter of this outbreak, these behaviors were present across the entire nation, from Seattle to Miami, San Diego through Chicago and Detroit to Boston, in rural Nebraska to Albany, Georgia. Everywhere there was a need, you and other caregivers tried to fill that need. My second thought is concern. Concern for your personal well being as you move to another stage in your professional career, continuing to deal with this healthcare need that a population is in self-dealing with, with the pandemic. Each of us in our roles in healthcare have been touched by this pandemic. In a profession that had nearly 50% of its number feeling emotionally or intellectually challenged due to the workload and other pressures prior to the pandemic, the psychologic impact of dealing with the workload and personal pain of coping with death of patients in large numbers due to a viral disease without effective treatment will be significant. In a recent article in the New England Journal of Medicine, Drs. Victor Zhao, Daryl Kirch, and I warned of a parallel pandemic, the silent epidemic of pain, burnout, depression, and post-traumatic stress that we fear will emerge in caregivers over the next few months. I ask you to watch for the signs of depression, burnout, suicidal ideations, and other symptoms in yourself and the members of your team. Be open about this challenge, support each other, be willing to ask colleagues how they're doing and acknowledge that you may also be at risk too. You must trust that as you have been there for others, others will be there for you in your time of need. Please don't go it alone. Finally, I have tremendous optimism and a request. You are the generation who have tackled the coronavirus have had the opportunity to change healthcare for the better. 
You have seen firsthand in the emergency room and the ICU the devastating impact of disparities in healthcare access, treatment, and the social determinants of health on serious illness and death in our population. The disparate death rate in Chicago for African American citizens, the outbreak in workers of Hispanic origin in meatpacking plants in the Midwest, or the horrific death rate among Native Americans on reservations in the Southwest must call us to action. It is time for physicians, nurses, and other healthcare professionals to show America how to treat each other. We have seen how public responds to our work on their behalf with respect and admiration. We must now more than ever use that respect and admiration towards the goal of reduction, reduction pardon me, in disparities and achievement of equity and access to and outcomes of health and well-being. This is my request of you. As you move through your career, do not lose the passion you have demonstrated for helping others. Make it part of you who you are. Aristotle would say that you are habituating the virtue. The altruism that brought you to medicine many years ago has bloomed into a gift for society, the gift of caring about someone while caring for them. Please find ways to do that for everyone in society, regardless of their status or ethnic background. If you are able to do this individually, collectively you will have produced the health, equity, and fairness that we all desire to see for those we love. And when you reach an age similar to mine, you will look back and be able to say with pride that you made the difference you aspired to make when you chose medicine as a career. Let altruism be your touchstone, your bridge over troubled water in times of uncertainty. If doing the right thing for the right reason, even when it's not in your own best interest, is your guide, you will make just decisions. I know that because you have already shown it to be true. Thank you for your commitment to excellence. Thank you for your altruistic commitment to those we serve. And Godspeed on your journey of service. Congratulations.